Lost in the Desert. A true story about Grandpa when he was a little boy. David's family were on their way to California with a large caravan of about 50 people traveling in 12 cars. In those days, people would travel together in caravans for protection. So, having filled their gas tanks and water containers, they were ready to go. David loved to travel and would even help his father by reading the maps. After their first day of traveling, they all gathered around the campfire and began to go over their traveling plans. One of the men suggested they take a shortcut through the Rocky Mountains rather than take the long way around them, and after discussing it for a while, they decided to go through the mountain pass. The next day they began their journey up the mountain. As they neared the top, the wind began to blow and the snow began to fall. Soon they were caught in a terrible blizzard and the car slid dangerously from one side to the other. Some sections of the road had been washed away by the heavy rains. They desperately prayed for their safety. It looked like they weren't going to make it, but finally the storm let up. Now they were going to have to go down the mountain, and going down is always the hardest part. They had never gone down such a steep slope as this one, and it wasn't long before they wore out both the brakes and the emergency brakes. So the only way they could keep themselves from going too fast was to use their bumper against the side of the mountain. It worked for a while, but pretty soon the bumper bent in against one of the tires so they had to stop and fix it. Finally they made it down the mountain. It was the scariest ride they ever had and they were thankful it was all over. Now they had to cross the Mojave Desert. The rains had washed away the road signs so they were just going to have to head out in hopes of reaching Honkus which was the nearest town where they could refuel and get water. So they set off across the desert sands in the hot sun. On and on they drove, but still no sign of Honkus. They came across some car tracks in the sand, but realized that these were their tracks and they'd been going around in a circle. They were lost. The water supply was running low, and they were almost out of food. Their cars were also getting stuck in the soft sand. The local sheriff received a message from Honkus saying, there was still no sign of the travelers for three days now. They were going to have to send out a search party to find and rescue these folks lost in the desert. So there they were, four days without food, and three days without water, and their tongues got so dry that they swelled up in their mouths, so that even if they had something to eat, they could not have eaten. While trying to get their cars out of the sand, an Indian came riding towards them. Father quickly got a water bucket and asked if the Indian could get them some water and he would give him some money. The Indian took the bucket and started off. Meanwhile, they would try to get their cars out of the sand. After some time, the Indian returned with the bucket. Father gave him the money, then took the bucket. Then the Indian let out quite a yelp and went riding into the distance. The way that Indian took off in such a hurry, they figured they better check what was in that bucket. They quickly took the lid off, only to find 
not a bucket of water, but a bucket of mud. They didn't know what to do. Without water, they would soon die out there in the desert heat. Suddenly, they noticed something on the horizon. Could it be a bunch of wild horses? Or maybe it was the Indians? Or could it be... Yes, it was the sheriff and his men. It's the sheriff! Yay! Thank God we finally found you, said the sheriff. They had been searching the desert for days. They brought food and water and gave it to them. Their prayers had been answered. It was a miracle that they were found. One of the men commented, Yes, a miracle indeed. I haven't been praying much in my life, but by now I'm sure prayed up to date. They arrived in Honkus the next evening and were put up in a hotel and treated royally and it seemed like heaven after such a hard journey. And they learned a lot of good lessons, especially not to take any shortcuts they weren't sure of. And as the old saying goes, if you go slow, you'll get there quicker. At least you'll get there. The Electric Man This is a true story about a man who risked his life to tell kids about God and his love. Erwin Moon, or the Electric Man, as he was called, was a jolly fellow, and he had a show that he would perform for kids all across the country. David was on his way to school when he met his friend who told him that there was going to be a special program today in school. Great, what's it going to be about? asked David. I don't know. I only heard it's going to be real special. The principal came into the classroom and announced that the program would begin soon and could we please proceed to the auditorium. As we crossed the school grounds to the auditorium, a big truck pulled up with a happy-looking fellow driving, and on the side of the truck was painted, The Electric Man. And before we knew it, he'd set up on stage the most amazing array of electrical gear we'd ever seen. He came with about two tons of electronic equipment, and he showed us all about electricity. It was very interesting and fascinating to us kids. He showed us the very early stages of a new type of recording machine, a wire recorder. They didn't even have tape recorders yet. Then he called me up on the stage and I sang a little song. Then he played it back. It was really amazing. Then he did his dangerous stunt. He stood with his bare feet on top of a great big electrical coil. He held up a two by four piece of wood in his hands and his assistant would turn on the electricity. Then a million volts of electricity went through his body and burned a hole all the way up the board. The actual amount of electricity, the amps, was very small, so it didn't kill him. But the volts were very high, and it burned a hole right through the wood. Before he could do the stunt, he had to take anything metal off his person. One day I forgot, he said, and left my keys in my pocket. 
They no sooner turned the power on, and I screamed, Turn it off! And my keys became a little molten glob of metal. Somehow the electricity seemed to affect metals and certain other things more than his body. But the doctors warned him not to do this stunt every day. He could be hurting his body in some way they didn't realize. But he kept on. And do you know why he did it? He did it to get a crowd, so that he could tell them about Jesus and preach the gospel. He tried to show how God is behind all the things that were created. We use the power of electricity in our everyday lives, though no one really understands it, not even the scientists. God is something like electricity. You may not know where he comes from, how he got here, or what he's made of, but he exists and he works. God is just like electricity. He brings you love and light invisibly, but you know he's always there. The power's always on. Just flip the switch and you'll be turned on. Just flip the switch and you'll be turned on. Welcome to Open the Door for the Children. My name's Grandpa, and I'm here to tell you a story. If you like stories, then gather around, because I have a good story for you today, and the kind of story that I'm going to tell you is a true story. That means it really happened. Now listen closely. It takes place in the vast land of India. A land where there are millions of people. India has always intrigued me. It's such a beautiful place with such friendly people. Our story is about Pandita Ramabai. Oh, Pandita. She had so much love for the people of India. She was a Christian prophetess and a native Indian missionary who established the Ramabai Muktai Mission. Pandita. She was dying. She was dying of some disease. Oh, so few have so much love for the people of India. It took place somewhere in northern India. Yes, at the Muktai Mission. I'm sure Pandita spent much time teaching the little children of the mission. Oh, Pandita, we like that story about Jesus and the woman at the well. We are learning to be more like Jesus every day. And we love you, Pandita. Oh, I love you too, children, so much, just as Jesus does. And remember, Jesus walked miles out of his way in the heat of the day to show love to and win one woman at the well. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. And just as Jesus went everywhere doing good, so we too should follow in his steps and do good also. Now run along, children, and I'll tell you another story later. Oh, many years, many years. People promise they will go up into mountains to where my people live and give them Jesus. But still no one go. Ah, the good doctor promised me he would go. Pandita! Pandita! Oh, Pandita! They found water. Yes, they found water, like you said. Where you told them to dig. They found water. Everyone is so happy and glad that you have come here to help us. Tell me, Pandita, how did you know where there would be water? How did I know? Why, God showed me. Because he loves you and knows what you need. He wants you to be happy and have everything you need. Pandita, you don't look well. You should take it easy. Maybe you should go home and get out of the hot 
son. Oh, maybe so, maybe so. But I'm old woman now and not very long to live. And for a long time, people promised me they would go to mountains to see my people and give them Jesus. But still they don't go. I must go see doctor right away. Oh, goodness me. Oh, it's so hot here. Dear, dear. Oh, if only I was back home. Oh, no, but still I must persevere here and help these people. Let me see, where was that prescription? I had to give that fellow some aspirins or something. What was it? Oh, dear. Now, what have I... What have I got to do today? Let me see. I was hoping Pandit would come. Oh, come in. Come in. Oh, Pandita. I'm glad you're here today. I was meaning to come and see you. I wanted to talk to you about your health. You know, Pandita, you're a very sick woman. And I'm told you spend so much time each day helping people and teaching them about Jesus. Now, that's all very good. But you must not work so hard. You must rest more. Doctor, I know I am a sick woman, and I'm going to die. But tell me, how long do I have to live? Well, with this particular condition, and according to medical knowledge, Pandita, if you be careful and... Uh, Take it easy and don't do so much of this work. You may live one year. Oh, Doctor, long time you promised me you would go to my people beyond high mountains with love of Jesus. But still you don't go. If I take pack on my back with all little gospels for my people and climb high mountain and go myself, how long then I live maybe? Oh, Candida, maybe you only live six months. Half as much. Doctor... Here, I'm old woman. You strap the pack on my back, and I'm going to my people. Many years you tell me you go, but you don't go. You strap pack on my back, and I'm going to my people. Wait, Pandita. We'll go someday. You don't have to go. You're cutting your life in two. It's a hard climb way up in the high mountains in northern India. Wait, Pandita. We'll go. Why don't you live longer? Pandita! Pandita! No, I go now. Pandita, you're cutting your life in two. It's a hard climb way up in the mountains in northern India. Oh, Pandita, what's wrong? You sound as if you're crying. Don't cry. Oh, Pandita, I know you. The thought of this must be very hard. Why, you don't have to go. We'll go for you someday. Oh, foolish man. I don't cry because I have to go. I cry because Jesus gave his whole life for me. And I only have half a life to give for Jesus. Last they saw her, she was climbing the mountain trail with the heavy backpack. So few have loved like Pandita. She went up the trail, weeping to her people. And she only had half a life to give for her people when Jesus gave his whole life for her. You can imagine the joy when Pandita came up and met her people for the first time in many years. It was a very hard climb up the mountains to her villa. A true shepherdess who was willing to give her life for her people. Pandita must have spent a lot of time teaching and telling stories about Jesus to the little children, as Jesus said himself, for except ye be converted and is become as a little child, ye shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. He also said to suffer little children to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. You can imagine that Jesus too always had little children around to teach and love. I'm sure that Pandita was a big help to her people, being where she was needed the most, teaching or helping the sick. Remember Jesus said, if you have done it unto the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. So whatever you do to help others, it's like doing it to Jesus. 
Oh, so few have so much love for their people like Pandita. Well, Pandita must have done a good job reaching her people with the love of Jesus. Because, as the story goes, many years later, her people came down from the mountain, saying they're saved and have Jesus, because Pandita came with half her life to give to her people. Sing along now. Everybody sing this song with me. Into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today, come in to stay, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Did you sing that little song with me now? If you sang that song, then you have Jesus in your heart to stay forever. Well, we sure love you all, and it's time to go, and we're so glad that you were here for our story today. Hope to see you all again 
Goodbye now. We love you all. God bless you all. Goodbye now. Open the door for the children. Tenderly gather them in. I kept singing. Open the door for the children. I kept singing. Music with Meaning presents I'm a Live One. This is the story of Old Sam and Master Jackson. Old Sam had worked hard all his life on the big cotton plantation. His mother and father had been slaves on this same plantation, but since the Civil War, no one was called a slave anymore. Old oh, Sam worked hard all his life on the big old cotton plantation. His mother and his father had been slaves But since the Civil War No one was called slave anymore No one was called a slave anymore Yet the poor still had to keep on working for the rich When Sam was younger he had worked out in the cotton fields But now he was getting old His wife had gone to be with the Lord And all he had to do was look after his master. Sam? Yes, Master Jackson? Would you mind to bring me some wine? Yes, Master Jackson. The wine. Thank you, Sam. Will there be anything else, Master? I forgot. Uh, would you bring me my cigars, please? Yes, Master Jackson. Your cigars. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. It's one of these evenings where you just want to look out the window and dream, isn't it, Sam? Sure is one of them evenings, Master. Sure is one of them evenings. Sam's life had never been easy. He knew what sadness and sorrow were. But his love for Jesus never changed and he did his best. Tell others about the Lord. Master Jackson was younger than Sam. His life had been easy. He liked old Sam, but he could never understand Sam's faith. He admired old Sam's strong faith, but it seemed to him that Sam had more problems than he did. That was one thing that Master Jackson could not understand. How come, Sam? How come you're a Christian, yet you have all these troubles and trials and tribulations? Hey, I don't even believe in God, and yet I have everything that a man can think of. Riches, fun, a nice home, and I'm a free, wealthy man. I don't have nearly as many troubles as you do. Well, I, I don't rather know the answer to your question, boss. I guess I'll have to think for a while before I can answer that one. Old Sam said I'll have to think a while Before I can answer that one But there must be a reason why old Sam Had so many troubles And Master Jackson had the fun Oh, what a wonderful morning, Sam Bring him a morning tea, please and my breakfast, too, please. Yes, Mr. Jackson. I'll be right back. What a day, blue sky, sunshine. Your tea, Master. The breakfast will be ready in just a few minutes. Sam, Sam, did you hear that? Did I hear what, Master Jackson? Didn't you hear that? Outside the window. Mr. Jackson, I don't hear nothing but duck. Tonight we're going to have roast duck, Sam. Quick, let's forget the breakfast. Get my boots and gun, we're going a-hunting. Quiet, Sam. I think this is a good place. Well, it sure is, Master. Hi, 
Right here behind this tree, Sam. Yes, Master, behind this tree, I lied. They're coming, they're coming. I can see the Master. Sam. I'm sorry, Master. I mean, yes, Master. Go after them, Sam, quick. Red Bulls, I'm good. Bag the live ones, bag the live ones. Leave the dead ones, lay. Yes, some of the ducks were dead, but some only wounded. And Master Jackson knew that wounded ducks could still get up and fly away if someone didn't grab them quick. That's why he sent Sam to go after the live ones first. Bag the live ones, bag the live ones. Leave the dead ones, lay. When old Sam returned with the ducks in his bag, he looked at his rich master with a big smile on his face. What's so funny, Sam? Why are you laughing? Oh, Master, Master, I think I got the answer to your question. Now, you see, I'm a live one. The devil is afraid I'm going to get away, so he tries to bag me first. Master Jackson, you're a dead one. He's already got you. He's not a bit worried about you, but the devil wants me to stop serving and trusting the Lord. And that is why he gives me more troubles than you. I think I got the answer to your question, boss. You see, I'm a live one. The devil's afraid I'm going to get away, so he tries to bag me first. But boss, you're a dead one. The devil's already got you. And he's not a bit worried about what you're gonna do. I think I got the answer to your question, boss. You see, I'm a live one. The devil's afraid I'm gonna get away, so he tries to bag me first. If he wants me to stop sitting alone, so he gives him more trouble than you. Cause he's worried I'm gonna get away, and he's afraid what I might do. Children, if you're gonna serve the Lord, be a live one too. You gotta be ready for troubles and trials the devil's gonna throw at you. So keep on fighting the fight of faith, doing the best you can. Then you'll be alive one too, just like dear old Sam. Yes, Christians may have many battles, but their rewards are very great. Count your blessings and resist the enemy so he will flee from you. And if you keep fighting the good fight of faith, you'll keep winning and you'll be a live one like dear old Sam. Children, if you are going to serve the Lord, be a live one too. You've got to be ready for troubles and trials the devil's going to throw at you. So keep on fighting the fight of faith, doing the best you can. Then you'll be alive one too, just like dear old Sam. Music with Meaning presents the true story of the little angel of the street. One of the most rewarding experiences that I have ever had while serving the Lord as a traveling evangelist was when I was asked to speak at a mission in the poorest part of a large city. I'll never forget that night when a poor, sick, drug-ridden prostitute walked in just as the evening service was beginning. <coughs> the music sounds good tonight. I'd like to listen. Uh, I wonder if they'll let me in. They all know who I am. Well, I've got nothing to lose and no place to go anyhow. Uh, excuse me, can I help you to a seat, ma'am? What? <coughs> yeah, sure. It's okay I'm here? Of course. As a matter of fact, it's good you came by tonight because Mrs. Brand is about to speak and she's a really inspired woman. Well, the music, it sounded good from the outside, but I'm not the church-going type. I usually don't come to places like this. Oh, we're, we're happy to have you. Oh, she's about to begin. Uh, can I sit with you? Yeah, yeah, okay. We're so pleased to have Mrs. Virginia Brand to speak to us here tonight. She took time from a busy schedule to come here and we're so happy she did. 
Mrs. Brandt. Brothers and sisters, God bless you. Thank you all for coming. And the Lord certainly does love all of you. And I pray it will be a blessing for you tonight. Now I know life's been hard for some of you, maybe most of you. You've maybe suffered so much at the hand of others. And for those of you who have slipped into lives of vice and crime, the Lord says that he will abundantly pardon as far as the east is from the west, he says in the 103rd Psalm, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter how bad you are or if you've been wicked. It doesn't matter to God. With God's forgiveness, you can start your life all over again. You can become a new creature and be born again. God wants to give you a new heart, a new chance. Just confess your sins to him. Ask him to forgive you. Receive his son, Jesus Christ, into your heart. Tonight he'll save you. Just take him and he'll do all the rest. Does she really mean all that? Yes, every word of it. You don't have to try to be good. You don't have to do anything else. But for me, do you know what I am? Jesus will do it all in your heart, truly. Who here wants him? Who wants to take Jesus tonight? He's waiting with open arms to forgive you and comfort your heart. Come just as you are. He only wants your heart. I've got to find out. Can it be true for me too? Excuse me, mister. I've got to talk with her. Yes, yes. Go on ahead. Oh, Lord. Help her to receive it. Did you mean that? That's all I've got to do? Yes, yes. That's all you've got to do. But, but don't you know? I'm a prostitute and a bad woman. I, I live on drugs. You mean all I've got to do to get rid of all that is just take Jesus? It's not a church ceremony. I just got to take Jesus? Yes, that's all. That's what God wants you to do. You precious girl, pray this with me. Jesus, I take you tonight as my Savior. Jesus, I'll take you. I'll take you. Forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for my sins. Help me to live for you and for others. Help me to live for you. It's real. Oh, God. Help me to start over. Thank you, Mrs. Brent. You saved my life. I don't have much of it left. But what I have left, I'm going to give it to Jesus. God bless you. The Lord is going to do mighty miracles in your life. People need to hear about this. There's a lot more out there like me. They need Jesus so bad. I need to tell them he's real. Listen to that. I know them. They fed me once. Maybe I can go with them. I'll go help them tell about Jesus. Wait a minute. Don't you want me to help you? Can't I help you get back to your room and get your things? Listen, I never want to see that place again. I don't need anything from that old life. That's not me anymore. I'm a new person. I have Jesus. I don't want any part of it. So she walked out of that mission and into a new life. And though her body was weakened through years of abuse and drugs, she began to pour her love, concern and compassion for people with all the strength she had left. I was later told that she moved to a poor neighborhood where among the many people she helped, she became known 
as the little angel of the street. More soup, mister? Mm, yeah, I'll have some more. Thanks. Yeah, me too. It's mighty good. Thanks a lot, Angel. Oh, you sure take good care of this, Angel. Okay. Line up. It's good and hot. It'll warm you up and strengthen your bodies. Just like Jesus warms your hearts and strengthens your souls. Yeah, you sure talk pretty, Angel. You make me want to believe it. Yeah, me too. Well, you just need to take him. Take Jesus and he'll come into you. It's so easy. It's just as easy as taking this cup from me. Why don't you pray with me? Why don't you pray with me to take him in right now? How, how can we do that? We're, we're not even, even in a church. The Lord is everywhere. Most of all, he wants you to make a place for him in your hearts. You all know what I was up to before Jesus came into me and changed me. Yeah, yeah, sure. We know, yeah. Well, you can let him do the same thing for you. We can pray together right now. It's so simple. Here, just take my hand. Oh, okay. Uh, come here, Sam. Okay. Jesus, I take you tonight as my Savior. Jesus, I take you tonight as my Savior. Forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for my sins. Help me to live for you. A few years later, I went back to the same place and I inquired about that same girl. Do you know who I mean? The frail little sick girl who was with the Salvation Army. Oh, yes. I remember when she came in that night. She became known as the little angel of the street. Yes, a wonderful girl. But she only lived for two years after she got saved. But she was a real soul winner, always telling people about Jesus. Praise God! And now she's with him. Yes, and that's the story of the little angel of the street. All she did was ask Jesus into her heart and he came in and gave her happiness and a totally changed life. So if you're looking for happiness, peace and a changed life, just take Jesus into your heart today. Sometimes the miracle he would do was really funny. I remember one time at breakfast. Breakfast time! Boys, are you up yet? Yes, Mother! Well, come on down then. It's ready. Okay, Mother! Open up get there first! No, I will! Now slow down, boys. I'm so hungry. I'm sure glad it's breakfast time. David, go get the milk, please. Okay. Hmm, none here. Mother, do we have any milk left? In the refrigerator, dear. There's none there. We must have run out. 
I can run to your shop and buy a quart of milk. Honey, we don't have any money left, but don't worry. Mother, does that mean we have to eat dry cereal then? Don't worry, children. The Lord will supply. He's never failed us. Well, let's go for a walk before breakfast. Come on, David. Put your jacket on. shiny coin dropped from the sky but but where did it come from I can't see anyone around nope no one in sight well who dropped it <laughs> I know who dropped it God dropped it <laughs> isn't God funny dropping coins from the sky here mother I'll go buy the milk now we can have our cereal thank, thank you Jesus. Jesus how funny can you get dropping coins from the sky who else would run his business that way? But God likes to do things differently, just to show his power that he is not bound by any kind of impossibility. So, trust the Lord that he will supply your needs. And he will. He's promised to. Even if he has to drop the money out of the sky. Breakfast time, breakfast time, but there was no milk, no coins could we find. Don't you worry, don't you fret, the Lord loves you, so don't forget. Heavenly windows open wide, dropping the blessings out of the sky. Heavenly windows open wide. God will never fail to supply. So we took a walk down the block. His word says to ask and seek and knock. Tinkle, tinkle down the street. A shiny new coin fell to our feet. Heavenly windows open wide. Dropping the blessings out of the sky Heavenly windows open wide God will never fail to supply There we found on the ground A coin and no one else was around God will always answer prayer Any time and any the blessings out of the sky. Heavenly windows open wide. God will never fail to supply. Heavenly windows open wide. Dropping the blessings out of the sky. Heavenly windows open wide. God will never fail to supply. Heavenly windows open wide, dropping the blessings out of the sky. Heavenly windows open wide, God will never fail to supply. Music with Meaning presents the true story of Nothing Short of Right is Right.
Nothing short of right is right. That's what the giant sign says on the wall of a very large aeroplane factory. The letters are 10 feet tall on a wall 10 blocks long to remind the men that when you build aeroplanes, only what's done right is right. And if it's not just right, then it's wrong. Joe! Joe! Yes, boss. Coming. Come over here. Yes, boss. Joe. Now, you've been doing a good job. I've chosen you to run the new machine. Oh, thank Come you. with me. Right, Joe. Here she is. Now, this machine's going to help us to build a lot more aeroplanes. I'm going to show you how it works. This here is the control panel. And here's how you switch it on. Oh, it sure is a nice machine, boss. Now, Joe, I know you're a good machinist. You're one of the best. But if the machine should go wrong, don't try to fix it yourself. It's too new and hard to fix. So if you have any trouble, the best thing you can do, Joe, is to call me. Do you understand? Yes. OK, boss. I will. Right. Best of luck with the machine, Joe. Thank you, boss. Joe smiled. He was sure he would have no trouble with the machine. But later... Hey, wait a minute. It's not running right. Hey, what's happening? Should I call the boss? No, I can fix it myself. I'll shut it up. Okay, just to tighten this here, just adjust that, there, that should do it. Now, let's see if she runs. Oh no! Oh no, the whole machine's breaking up! Oh, here comes the boss. Go! Go! Oh, goodness me. What's going on here? Watch out! Oh, no. The machine. The machine! Joe, you totally wrecked the machine! But, boss, it started going wrong and I tried to fix it. I did the best I could. I did the very best I could. Your very best was to call me. You've wrecked a hundred thousand pound machine and you've lost your job. But boss! I'm sorry, but I can't have men working for me who won't obey orders. But I did what I thought was right. Haven't you read what the sign says? Nothing short of right is right. Joe, you're fired. But boss! Out! Nothing short of right is right, and what's not right is wrong. So reads the airplane factory sign that is ten blocks long. Nothing short of right is right, and what's not right is wrong. Just like a bad note in a song. If it's not right, it must be wrong. The best thing Joe could have done was to call the boss. But he thought he knew it all, so his job he lost. Nothing short of right is right, and what's not right is wrong. So reads the airplane factory sign that is ten blocks long. Nothing short of right is right, and what's not right is wrong. Just like a bad note in a song. If it's not right, it must be wrong. When you think you know it all, it's right before your fall. Joe had wanted all the glory, so he lost it all. So Joe lost his job because he thought he was too smart to need anyone else's help. Sometimes we get a little bit like Joe and think we're pretty smart. 
But may we never make a move without hearing from God. Those who win are those who wait upon his word. And those who fail are those, like Joe, who go on without it. Nothing short of right is right, and what's not right is wrong. So reads the airplane factory sign that is ten blocks long. Nothing short of right is right, and what's not right is wrong. Just like a bad note in a song. The true story of my guardian angel. few of them, but this one I've seen quite a few times. He's tall and handsome, and even has blonde hair, and his face shines with a light that never shone on land or sea. He's always so peaceful, calm, and usually pleasant and smiling. Only one time did I ever see him looking angry and fierce, and that was a long time ago when I was a teenager heading across the road to a very bad part of town. I've been told never to come to this part of town, but all I have to do is cross the street. I can't wait to see what they have in one of those clubs. When suddenly, there he was, right in front of me, in the middle of the sidewalk, dressed in bum's clothes. Huh? Who's that? It looks like a bum, but his eyes. His eyes are glowing like fire. He looked fiercely into my eyes and spoke not with his mouth, but with his eyes and thoughts right into my mind. I heard him loud and clear in my head as he looked at me with great disgust. And where do you think you're going now? Oh no, I'm getting out of here. I nearly did a backflip. I was so scared I ran across the road dodging the cars. It was a miracle I wasn't killed. Trying to get yourself killed. I wonder if he's following me. Lord, I promise I'll take the first train home. Somehow I knew he was an angel of God. An angel of God in disguise. And he sure knew where I was going. And he was sent by God to turn me back from my evil ways. It worked. Because he nearly scared me out of my wits. And I'll never forget it. Have you ever met your guardian angel, the one who watches over you, the one whose job is you? Have you ever met your guardian angel, the one who watches over you, the one job is you. The next time I saw him was much more pleasant, thank the Lord. I was trying hard to serve the Lord with my little family. And I remember I was driving this big ten-ton truck and house trailer. I'm sorry, honey, but I think we're lost. According to the map, if I could just get to this bridge, then that would lead us to the highway. It's so dark and lonely, and nobody seems to be on the street. I know. If there was just somebody I could get directions from. Suddenly, out of the shadows of an office building, a fine-looking businessman stepped towards the curb. I quickly rolled down my window. He smiled and said, Yes, it's that way, the way you're going. Thank you, sir. God bless you. And 
so I drove on toward the bridge, which was, sure enough, just ahead of me. When suddenly, I was half frightened and half thrilled. Honey, did you hear that? He, he told us which direction to go. Well, of course. Yes, but I didn't even ask him the question. That's right. You didn't. And you know something else? Those eyes were so strange. His eyes, they seemed to burn like fire, like almost seeing right through me, like he knew everything I was thinking. What a strange experience. You know, it's almost like I remember seeing him before somewhere. Well, I don't think I ever had. Honey, honey, you know what? I remember where it was. It was that same man. The same man that stopped me back in Los Angeles when I was going into that whorehouse and warned me not to go. You mean, it was that angel? Yes. It was that very same angel. I know it was. Have you ever met your guardian angel, the one? Watches over you, the one whose job is you. Have you ever met your guardian angel, the one who watches over you, the one whose job is you? with meaning presents Stop the Train Nice and crisp. Oh, thank mm. you, sweetheart. Honey, mm -hmm. what time is it? Uh, it's, uh, let me see, it's, uh, 7.15. But, honey, mm -hmm. that's what you said about half an hour ago. Oh, no. Oh, my watch must have stopped. Uh, honey, could you go and look at the clock in the bedroom? Okay. I must have forgotten to wind my watch last night. Honey? Yeah? It's a quarter to eight. You're gonna miss the eight o'clock train. Oh, no. I'm going to be late for my appointment. Honey, can you get together my papers quickly? Okay. And did you iron my shirt? It's on the chair. Here are your papers. Thank you. Where's your briefcase? Uh, it's in the hallway. You put the papers in whilst I get my clothes on. Okay. Oh, it's really a terrible thing being late. I usually always try to be at least an hour early for my appointment. Honey, here's your briefcase Thank and your you, umbrella dear. and your overcoat. Okay. Okay, I've got to run. Okay, I love you. Bye, dear. I'll see you later. Okay. Bye. Oh, if I miss this appointment, it's going to make a bad impression on them. How silly of me to forget to wind my watch. Oh, Lord, it's getting late. Please help me to catch the train. Oh, no. Oh, no, I've dropped all of my papers. The hurrier I go, the behinder I get. Oh, here, sir. I'll help you pick those up. Oh, thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, why can't I trust the Lord that he's able to stop the whole world or stop the sun like Joshua had him to? I beg your pardon? Oh, nothing. Nothing. Oh, thank you very much, sir. Oh! Oh, no, my heart. Oh, no. Oh, Lord. David, if you keep up this nervous and physical strain, you're going to kill yourself. Oh, amen, Lord. Oh, I'm sorry. 
I'll put it in your hands. Lord, you stop the train. And I'm just gonna relax. Take my time. The Lord! Why do I ever worry? The train is still here. Oh, that's a miracle. When will I ever learn to trust the Lord? Oh, good. Here's a nice seat. By the window. Your ticket, please. Oh, yes, sir. There you are. Thank you. Now, let's see what's in today's paper. Hmm, yes. Well, that was an interesting article. That's funny, I've been sitting here for 40 minutes. This train is usually always very punctual. <laughs> it should have left a long time ago. That's strange. Lord? Lord, why hasn't the train left yet? But David, you asked me to stop the train, but you didn't tell me you wanted to leave yet. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, I'm sorry, Lord. Lord, I pray that this train leaves, and I pray that it leaves right now. <laughs> It takes time to walk out in the morning It takes time to let him have his way It takes time to know that God loves you It takes time It takes time It takes time to bring a man from the cradle it takes time to bring him to his grave It takes time to teach a man wisdom It takes time, so much time It takes time to walk out in the morning It takes time to let him have his way It takes time to know that God loves you It takes time It takes time Take it easy There's no use trying to kill yourself. If you're late, just relax. Slow it down. And the Lord will slow everything else down for you, if necessary. Squeeze. Don't jerk. Howdy, folks. Welcome to Yosemite Park. Staying a while? Yeah, we'd like to camp here for the night. Why, sure. Uh, the campsites are down the road a piece. Now, just a warning to you, being as it's fall, the bears are particularly hungry this time of year, so keep a close watch on your food and yourselves. You hear? Yes, thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Enjoy your stay at Yosemite. Music with Meaning presents the true story of Trapped on a Mountain. We were camping 
Park. How about right here, dear? Yes, this place looks good. Come on, let's get set up. How about if we pitch the tent here? After eating lunch, I decided to climb a mountain. I'd like to climb that mountain, but I don't want to use those tourist trails. And if I ask Mother for permission, she'll probably say no. But I really want to, so I think I'll go anyway. I was a skinny, crazy teenager who loved adventure, and I was always attempting dangerous things. Ugh, those tourist trails are so boring, they're no fun. I'm going to go this way. And so I decided to go straight up the mountain. It was fall, we were camped in Yosemite Park. I decided to climb a mountain. I was always attempting dangerous things, so I went straight up. But it took me hours. of the beaten men. It took me hours to do it without the trail. But finally... <sighs> I made it. Wow, what a view. Hey! Hello! Hey, you down there! I'm up here on the mountain! Hey! I really love it on the mountain. It's such a thrilling place to be. But by now, the sun was setting. And with only a pair of thin pants on and a little t-shirt, I was starting to feel cold. <laughs> and then I thought, Wow, I gotta get out of here. But I'm sure not going back down the way I came. I looked at my map and I saw this trail that went off three miles through the woods over the top of Yosemite Falls and back to the valley. I figured... Well, I'll take that trail. I've still got enough daylight to get through three miles of woods. And so I started off through the woods. The sun was a setting and I thought, wow, I got to get out of here It gets freezing cold at night In the mountains at that time of year After going through the woods for a while, I thought... This year's funny. This trail doesn't look like it's been used for years. I kept losing the trail. It was getting darker. This trail doesn't look like it's been used much. And I soon found out why. Look at that! The bridge has been washed away by the river. How am I going to get across? And the valley trail is on the other side. The water was raging over the top of Yosemite Falls, one of the highest falls in the world, about 1,300 feet high. And it was at its fullest. I hiked about a mile upstream. There's no place to cross. I gotta get over. Hey, fisherman. Hey, you! Hey, mister! Hey! Help! Help! Though only 12 feet away, the fisherman couldn't even hear me. The sound of the river was so loud. Let me tell you, I was stuck and it was rough. And finally, I got desperate enough to pray. I tell you I was stuck and it was rough. I finally got desperate enough cause I hadn't prayed too much about it when I started up. What am I going to do? I 
can't swim this river. But oh, it's dark. And I'll never find my way back through the woods. It's cold and I don't even have a match. And if any of those bears come, oh, I just don't know what to do. Oh, Jesus, please help me. I really need you. Please show me where to go. Please, Lord, show me. David, you will have to go back through the woods. But Lord, I can't go back through the woods. I'll get lost, and it's dark, and the bears, and... And then it came to me that he would be guiding me by his hand. Well, believe it or not, I ran down that faint path three miles through the woods in the dark. The reason I ran was that I heard some crashing in the woods, and I thought, Here comes one of those bears. So I began singing at the top of my lungs. I was running in the pitch dark, singing at the top of my voice. It would have been funny if it hadn't been so scary. Sure. Send the light. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Is this the first mountain? This is the place where I came up. Oh, thank you, Lord. I got back to the top of the first mountain again. But all I had was starlight and a little moonlight as I tried to figure out where I should go from there. Lord, please show me now. How do I get down this mountain? Thank you, Lord, for helping me. Thank you, Jesus. Help me, Lord. The Lord led me to a little crack. I put my fingers and my toes in and started down. I didn't dare look back down, so I tried to go feet first, sliding most of the way on the seat of my pants. I ran back down that path Three miles to the woods And I really prayed And the Lord led the way And it's a miracle I'm here today And I really prayed And the Lord led the way I climbed the way. almost 4,000 feet Straight down in the pitch dark it was a miracle that I ever got back, and that I'm still here. Oh, poor mother. She must be really upset and worried about me. Finally, at 2 a.m., I tiptoed back into the tent and found my mother still praying for me. Dear Jesus, please bring him back safely, Lord, wherever he is. Protect him and forgive him for going off alone. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless her. I'm sure if it hadn't been for the Lord and her prayers, I never would have made it back. Mother, mother, I'm back. David, David, where have you been? I went up the mountain. Why didn't you tell me? It's two o'clock in the morning and I've been so worried. I'm sorry, mother. I know I should have told you. Oh, come on inside. You must be cold and tired and hungry. What a miracle. The Lord, he never fails. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. When I got to the top of the mountain, it was starting to... And so, children, be sure to always have a buddy with you when you go places and do things. And remember, before you go, be sure to pray desperately, asking the Lord to guide every step, every move, every direction. When he putteth forth his sheep, he goeth before them. He knows what's ahead, and he is leading. All we have to do is follow. God bless and keep you as you keep climbing that mountain for Jesus.
Music with Meaning presents the true story of a moon in London. Well, here we are, Maria, back in London. Yes, and what an exciting trip it's been. I'll get a porter for our luggage. Excuse me, porter. Yes, sir. Blimey, that's a mountain of luggage you got there. Where do you want me to move it? Could you put it over there by the uh, cab stand, please? Maria, sir. Maria, do you see any phones around? Mm, there's one over there. We'll phone our former landlady and see if she has a room free. When we phoned from the ship, she thought that she would have a room free by the time we got here. Still, before we go, let's make sure. Oh, no. Guess what? This phone is just completely dead. Let me ask where there's another one. Okay, sir. Your taxi's waiting. I've loaded all the luggage in the back. That will be 25p, sir. Sorry, I thought I'd asked you to put them by the stand and not put them into the taxi. Well, I'm sorry, sir. What do you want me to do? Unload the thing all again? No, no, no. It's too late now. Okay, well, there's your 25 pence and there's a tip. God bless you. Well, God bless you too, sir. Thank you very much. Well, the taxi's getting impatient, Maria. I don't think we're going to be able to phone. I guess we'll just have to go ahead by faith and trust the Lord that she has a room for us. You know, God works in mysterious ways. And sometimes we're just swept along by His current. Because if we had not gone to our landladies by faith, what happened later might never have happened. Time we were in London and needed a room Hotels are not cheap, we had little money So we tried to phone a lady who had rooms But the phone didn't work so we went to her house by faith Mysterious ways. Oh, hello, Mr. David. It's so nice to see you again. Did you have a nice trip? Oh, why, yes. Thank you, Mrs. Brown. It's so nice to see you again. I do wish you'd rang before coming, though, because I'm completely full up, I'm afraid. Oh, goodness me. Look at all your luggage, and you've unloaded it already. We thought surely you would take us in. Oh, I wish I could, dearie. But my whole family has come to stay, and I'm overflowing. You could try the lady next door. She has rooms. The thing is, I think she's on holiday in Mallorca. And goodness only knows when she'll be back. Uh, Mrs. Brown, perhaps you know of uh, some other places? Well, yes, there's a few other roaming houses in the area. I could give you their addresses if you'd like. You poor dears. You look like you need a nice cup of tea. Well, that's very kind of you, Mrs. Brown. But I think that we need to get going so that we can secure a room before it gets dark. But if we could at least leave our luggage in your hallway, that would save us lugging it around. Oh, of course, dear. Well, I do hope you find some place somewhere. The lady's house was full. What could we do? There was no place for us We walked hours Knocking on doors Hoping someone would give us a room Oh, hear what I say mysterious ways and so we went out desperately room hunting since hotels are not cheap in London and we went to several places Mrs. Brown had suggested 
No. Sorry, sir. We let the last room out, oh, half an hour ago. You'll have to try somewhere else. Sorry, mate. All the rooms are full. Try down the street. Now we're closed for repairs, love. Try the house opposite the supermarket. I think they have rooms. Finally, we were so desperate and exhausted after tramping the streets for several hours that we began just knocking on each and every door as we climbed the hills in the darkening gloom. Rooms? I think you got the wrong address. Sorry, mate. No rooms. What do you want here? Go away! Maria, I don't know when I've ever felt so low and so alone as in this big city all by ourselves. Let's try just one more. Lord, you know that I've shared everything I have with others. Now you make someone share with us. Felt so low and lonely in this city all alone with no place to lay our heads. I prayed, Lord, I have shared all I have with others. Please make someone now share with us. Oh, hear what I say. Oh, God works in mysterious ways. Oh, hello, can I help you? Oh, uh, yes, uh, my name is David and uh, this is Maria. Hello. And, well, we're in desperate need of a room to stay for the night. We're tired after a long journey and, well, we've looked all over. Well, you're welcome to stay here. Thank you very much. But I can't let you, really, because my mother isn't here. Oh, well... But I do have some friends up the street who might take you in. Come with me. And so this dear little teenager took us under her friendly wing and led us to another old house a few doors up, which turned out to be a house full of hippies. Hi, man. What can I do for you? Oh, hi, Derek. I wonder if you could take these two in tonight. I can't because my mother's away. But maybe you'd have room. They're really nice people and wouldn't be any trouble. If you don't have any rooms, they wouldn't mind sleeping on the floor, would you? Of course oh, no. not. No, of course not at all. They just need a roof over their heads, you know. Why, sure, man. That's okay. Come in and make yourselves at home. We already have about a dozen of us here living. Oh, well, that's interesting. We're also planning to start a commune here in London. In fact, in the very near future. Wow, is that a fact? Hey, everybody, meet... Uh... Oh, my name is David, and uh, this is Maria. Hi, man. Hi, man. Hi, man. Hi, man. Hi, Sit down and have some dinner. It's a uh, health food, actually. Mm, the salad is delicious. It's so healthy and natural, just the way that God made it. Now, tell us about this commune. Well... Communes are nothing new, you know. Uh, in fact, that was Jesus' plan, to live together and have all things in common. Well, just like you do. Wow, far out, man. In fact, well, he was a dropout from society, rejected by the system. The next door that we knocked on, a girl came out. She said she would help us. To a hippie house she led. And they took us in They gave us food and a bed And we shared God's love with them Oh, hear what I say Oh, God works in mysterious ways and so we were able to witness to the hippies and share God's love with them. And they treated us like old friends and listened eagerly to our stories. The next day, the Lord told us to once again try the little old lady who lived next door our former place. And what a miracle! She had just got back from Mallorca that very morning. Yes, I do have rooms. This one is just six pounds a week, including breakfast. Mm, what a nice, big, sunny room. And look at that huge table. It's just ideal for you to work on. Thank you, Jesus. It was just perfect. 
God sure does work in mysterious ways His wonders to perform. If you're ever in a city all alone And you have no place to stay Just step out by faith And the Lord will show the way He never fails if we trust and we obey what I say, oh, God works in mysterious ways, oh, hear what I say. Music with Meaning presents the true story of Tommy. Thanks for coming over, Jack. I don't get many visitors. That's okay, Tommy. It's on the way home from my paper route. I must get lonely sitting in this little room every day. Too bad Giant Betty isn't rich. And maybe you could see a doctor and he wouldn't be crippled and wouldn't have to live in this old rickety building. Oh, it's not so bad. Aunt Betty takes good care of me. She's at the store buying food now. Well, you must get awfully bored. What do you do all day? I read a lot, and I like to look out the window and watch the people going by. Look, we're three floors up. There sure are a lot of people down there. Yes, but you know what? They're all unhappy. Look at all those frowns. They don't know how fortunate they are. If I could walk, I'd be happy. Yes, Tom. If I didn't walk, I couldn't get people to read my papers. You know, my mother used to read to me. She had a big book, and she would read me stories about the man who went everywhere doing good. I wish I had that book now. Maybe it would help me to be happy. Jack, would you do me a favor? What's that, Tom? Would you go and find me that book and bring it to me? Well, I suppose I could. I have a little money saved up from selling papers. Okay, Tom, I'll go and find that book for you. That would be great. Thanks, Jack. I have to go now. When I come back, I'll bring you that book. I promise. Goodbye, Jack. Please don't forget it. I won't. Bye, Tom. <laughs> A man who went about everywhere doing good. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I don't think we have that one. No, no, we don't have it here. Man who went about everywhere doing good. Uh, uh, come and check next week. We've got new books coming in then. Can I, can I help your son? I'm looking for a book for a friend of mine. It's about a man who went everywhere doing good. A man who went about everywhere doing good? What, what's the title of the book? I don't know, sir. My friend Tom said his mother used to read it to him, and it was about a man who went everywhere doing good. Well, the only book I know of like that would be the Bible, the story of Jesus. Here you go, son. That'll be 50 cents. Well, I, uh, I only have ten cents. Oh, I, I'm sorry, son, but you need another forty cents. But you don't understand. My friend Tom, he's crippled. He can't walk, and he really wanted this book, so he wouldn't be sad. Oh, I'm sorry, son, but... I've looked all around, both up and downtown, for the book that my friend Tom asked for. So please lend a hand and help if you can. Tens all I have is no more. So please, Mr. Help, if you knew my friend Tom, I'm sure that you 
should feel this way too Cause Tommy's a guy Not like you or I He can't walk around like we do Okay, here you go, son. Thanks, mister. I, I hope it makes him happy. Thanks so much, Jack. You're such a good friend. Would you like to read it with me? Well, I'd better get home or I'll be late for dinner. Oh, okay, Jack. Thanks again. Bye, Tom. Bye, Jack. Now, where do I start? It's such a big book. This looks like a good place. The Gospel of St. John, Chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. It's time to wake up. Good morning, Aunt Betty. I'm really tired. Well, it's no wonder you're tired. You stayed up most of the night reading. What were you reading anyway? The Bible, Aunt Betty. The Bible? Yes, the Bible, the words of Jesus. I read and read, and the more I read, the happier I felt. And now I know. You know what? That Jesus saved me. He came to the earth to save me and you, Aunt Betty, and everyone. And all we have to do is believe. Tommy, reading the Bible won't put food on the table. And if you want to get anywhere in this world nowadays, you have to work hard. Well, I still know that Jesus saved me and that he loves me. <laughs> but if I could only walk... I can't even leave this little apartment. Jesus saved me, and I can't even tell anyone else. I want to do good, like Jesus. Now don't go crying, Tommy. There's nothing you can do. Preaching is for healthy folks, not cripple boys. Now eat your breakfast. But there must be something I could do. Well, you could read your Bible. Oh, Jesus, please show me a way to help those sad people. There you go. Make someone happy. What are you doing, Tommy? Aunt Betty, remember a couple of weeks ago and I wanted to do good like Jesus? Yes. Well, the Bible says all things are possible to him that believeth. So I prayed and asked Jesus to show me a way to cheer up those people on the street. And he gave me an idea. See this piece of paper? Yes. Well, all day I've been writing verses from the Bible on these little tiny pieces of paper and dropping them out the window. Out of the window? Tommy, that's littering. No, it isn't. Look. See that man picking it up? He's smiling. He's smiling. They're smiling. They're smiling. I've seen people do that all day. They're smiling. They're smiling. Jesus has shown me a way to be a help. Lord, I can't walk. Back through my window to them I can talk. And Betty just watch as the words flutter down That people see them and pick them up from the ground They're smiling, they're smiling They're smiling, they're smiling So they are, so they are, Tommy one girl even looked up and waved to me. 
I'm so glad God can use me to help people. Well, anyway, I have work to do. I've got to prepare supper. We've got to eat, you know. Let's see. Ah, here's a good one. He that hath the sun hath everlasting life. <laughs> Here's the spot. Maybe I'll find some clue here. I must find out where that little piece of paper came from. There! That window! The window is on the third floor, the fourth one over. I'll go up right away. Come in! Good afternoon, madam. My name is Henry Logan. I've come to find the person who's been dropping these little pieces of paper out the window. That's Tommy. But, mister, he didn't mean no harm. He's just a little cripple boy with nothing better to do. I told him he was littering. Hello, Tommy. So you're the one who's been dropping these Bible verses on the street. A sidewalk missionary. Yes, sir. I'm a hat manufacturer in this city. My wife and I have a large mansion in the suburbs and everything money can buy. But still, I felt a real emptiness in my heart. An unexplained loneliness. But then I found your Bible verse and I saw that salvation is really simple. So I tried it. And Jesus came into my life. I just had to find you and thank you. Tommy, I'd like to help you. How long have you been crippled? All my life. Have you been to a good doctor? When I was little, my mother took me to lots of doctors, but they all said there wasn't much they could do. Well, I know a very skilled surgeon who may be able to help you. I guess it wouldn't hurt to try. <laughs> Tommy, I have a surprise for you today. You and I have been friends for some time now, haven't we? Yes. Well, it's a long drive to come here so often, all the way across town, and it takes so much time. I was wondering if you'd like to come and live with me in my house. You mean your big mansion in the country? Yes. My wife and I have no children, and it gets lonely. I've talked it over with her, and she's delighted with the idea. She's happy to see how I've changed since I started visiting you and reading the Bible with you. But what about Aunt Betty? I've already talked it over with her, too. She thinks it's wonderful. Well, Tom, what do you say? Hmm. I'll have to ask my friend about it. Your friend? Yes, Jesus. All right, Tom. You ask Jesus, and I'll return tomorrow for your answer, okay? Okay, Mr. Logan. Thanks a lot. Bye now. Goodbye. God bless you. Oh, come in, Mr. Logan. I'm sure Tommy's really excited. Hello, Tommy. Hi, Mr. Logan. Well, what's your answer? I have a couple of questions. All right. Where did you say your home is? Oh, it's far out in the country on a large and beautiful estate. You'll have a beautiful room all your own, and servants to care for you, delicious meals, a good bed, every comfort and attention, and anything your heart desires. My wife and I will love you dearly and rear you as our own son. Are there any folks that would pass under my window? Why? <laughs> no. 
only an occasional servant and perhaps the gardener. <laughs> you don't understand, Tom. This is a gorgeous estate way out in the country, far from the busy noise of the city and the tumult of people. You'll have quiet there and be able to rest and read and do all you want, away from all this filth and smoke and noise and busy throngs. What's the matter, Tom? Why do you look so sad? I... I hate to hurt your feelings. What do you mean? I'm sorry, Mr. Logan, but you see, I couldn't live anywhere where people don't pass under my window. You mean you'd rather stay here? I could never live anywhere where people don't pass under my window. Having met the man who went about everywhere doing good, how could I ever live selfishly again? Tommy, you put me to shame. Here you are, so helpless and lame. Who'd have thought you'd have a ministry at all? But love found a way when the Master called. Freely you received, and now freely you give. Now I'm determined, this is how I shall live. By the grace of God, I will always try to help those passing under the window of my life having met the man who went everywhere doing good how could I live selfishly again freely I've received and now freely I'll do and like you Tom I'll try to live the same Mr. Logan, God will help you, just like he showed me that I could help others if I wanted to, no matter what. You'll still let me visit you, won't you? Oh, of course. Anytime you want. I'll keep you supplied with paper for the rest of your life. And don't worry about me living here. Mr. Logan, Jesus is preparing a mansion for me in heaven. They're smiling, they're smiling. <laughs>